name's Jake. Today we're going to be working with wax resist. I'm going to show you a quick and simple way to wax the feet of your pots. So I just have this little piece of packing foam here. I outline my circles of how big my pots are. And then I'm just going to brush wax resist around on those circles. I'm going to start with the bigger one first for the plate. Doesn't have to be exact, just generally get it on around that area that the circle shows through. Once you get that, um, for the plate, I have it on top of this foam pad so it'll sink down into the foam a little bit more to get a thicker foot. So I'm just going to take my plate, stick it on the ring, push down, hopefully give it a little twist. There we go. Give a little twist. And hopefully you have a nice waxed foot on your plate. And that works the same way with bowls or smaller things. Just remove this part. For the bowl, just use the smaller circle. Brush it around the circle. Take your bowl. And line it up generally with the circle, push down, squish it around. And you have a nice wax foot for your bowl. With no worries of dripping wax on your bisque wear so you don't have to re-bisque to get rid of the wax. And then for a little cup, you can just do the exact same thing. Just in a little tiny circle. Just get a nice little wax foot on your cup. Quick and easy waxing. The benefit of waxing this way is that you don't have to worry about dripping wax on your bisque wear, and you do not have to be super precise with brushing your wax on because pushing it into the foam will take care of that for you and give you a nice um, even line all the way around each time. And you can also wax multiple pieces off of one circle, so you can only have to you only have to brush wax on once and then you could probably get maybe two or three pots per brushing time. And that's it. Okay, hello, my name is Eliana and today we are working with wax and I'm gonna show you how I use wax when I glaze. So the first thing I do is I start with a bisque pot. This is one of my cups that I just fired. Um, and I make sure that I wipe out the inside so that there's no dust left in there. So I'm going to use this blue glaze and I'm going to pour it in and then pour it back out. So I pour quite a lot in there and then as I'm pouring it out, I will spin the cup. There that is. And then if there's any gaps left, I'll just take a fluffy brush and paint in that part. Okay, if you got any glaze on the outside where you don't want it, just quickly wipe it away with a sponge. Now it's a nice clean line and evenly glazed on the inside. Okay, you want to wait a little bit until the glaze is dried to the touch and it looks like this is already going to be fine. And now we're going to get to the waxing. This is the wax I use. It's called Reed Wax from Play Art Center in Tacoma in case you want it. Ding! I'm going to use the same brush that I just used glaze but it's cleaned off and I basically just load it up and I'm just going to start putting wax on top of what I just glazed on the inside. Once I get most of it waxed and I'm doing the very top, 
I make sure to be really careful not to get it on the bare fist part of the cup. to glaze the outside, I don't have to worry about any of the outer glaze getting onto the inside and overlapping and not being able to rub it off without ruining what I just did. So I'm going to have to wait a while for this to dry because since I just glazed it and waxed it, the bisque pot will get a little bit soaked with water and then it's harder to glaze the outside. So I usually wait overnight or at least a few hours. I'm John, and today I'm going to be doing a demo on No Scrape Mishima. So we're going to start, and we're going to be using this reed wax here, wax resist. So first thing we want to do is make sure it's nice and stirred up. And then at the top you get all these bubbles that kind of form. I like to just kind of slowly scrape them away to one side just so that I can keep them off the brush because those will get laid on there. Get this banding wheel going. And I'm just gonna lay this on in bands. It'll kind of absorb into the clay really quickly. So I'll get a little excess built up and just kind of work it towards the middle and then repeat. And so once you have the surface where you're going to be applying your, your drawing adequately covered, then you can set this aside to dry. It takes, you know, depending on the wetness of the clay, it'll take maybe 15 to 30 minutes to completely set up. Um, you want to make sure that before you start working on it, when you kind of touch it, it's not tacky. Now that we have the wax dried, I'm going to take the drawing and Kind of place it in there. Um, basically all we're going to do is get some sort of sharp tool. You can use a pencil, you can use one of these styluses, just something that's going to make an impression through the paper onto the surface of the clay. And then I'm just going to go through and kind of trace out the lines that I want to be on there. And this doesn't have to be perfect or anything because we're going to go back and carve it here in a minute. So once the image is transferred onto your uh, clay here, onto the resisted area, then you can go in with uh, whatever your carving tool of preference is. I like this uh, small ribbon tool here. And then just going in and carving back through the wax. Uh, it's okay if it goes into the clay a little bit but you don't want to go so deep that you know obviously you're going through the, the pot or um, so shallow that it's not actually making it through the wax. And you'll be able to tell uh, pretty well once you get it off because it is a slightly different color. some underglaze. So I typically just use these Amico Velvets. Um, they work really well for what I'm doing at the, the Phone 6 uh, electric we're doing here at Rat City Studios. Uh, so now basically all we got to do, since this is all waxed and it's going to resist in all the areas we haven't carved, is um, paint this on. And this is where we're saving some time because this doesn't have to be 
that clean. You just basically have to watch out that you don't get it where you haven't put wax. So you'll see it's kind of beating up on the surface here. So once you get a certain amount, you really don't have to keep adding more. You can just kind of keep working this in. You can go back in with a sponge and uh, lightly wipe this away. So as you can see, you can really quickly get the color in. And if you've ever done the more the you know traditional Mishima process where you're scraping the clay away, then you'll see really quickly why this is a time saver. <laughs> so then, when you're through, you end up with something like this. Now we're not actually through. <laughs> so that when you're doing working with the wax resist, uh, if you're working with the water-based one, you want to always make sure that. Before the, the wax sets up on the brush itself, you get in there and clean it out really good and really work the bristles with your hand and everything just to make sure you get all of that out and basically uh, replace the wax that's in the brush with water. Otherwise your brush will never be usable again. <laughs> Hi, I'm Deb and I'm going to show you a wax resist technique for waxing the bottom of this juicer. First I'm going to draw my name on the bottom with this underglaze pencil and then I'm going to put some underglaze dots under it just to accentuate it. And then I have to wait for these things to dry before I can put the wax on. Okay, uh, so now that the dots are dry, these underglaze dots are dry, I'm going to brush on wax all over the foot of this, except for not in the interior. I'm gonna put a glaze in there. So I'm just gonna hold the side of the brush up to the bevel that I cut in the form of this, and run the wax right along there. I'm trying to be really careful not to get it where I don't want it because it's a little challenging to get off in the spots you don't want it. You probably have to sand it or fire it off or something. Okay, so I do the edge first and then I'm just gonna brush gently over that underglaze pencil. And then I'm going to run along here too. <laughs> Kitty! Then I'm going to wait for that to dry and what this does is it makes it so I can pour this interior space and pour it out without it getting all over the bottom and also the same thing when I go to dip the outside layers so this makes it easier to keep the bottom clean throughout the whole glazing process. Now go.